Hey guys, welcome back to Foil Fridays. Today we're going to talk about adding a wing to your current foil or maybe a couple of wings to build your foil quiver, uh, if you will. Now, not everybody is going to need a additional wing on their foil to really be happy, but there's some real compelling reasons why you might wanna do that. So we're gonna jump into it, talk about some different offerings, what wings you might wanna consider and what benefits they're gonna have. So in this video, we're going to show you how to build your own custom quiver to really fine tune it to suit whatever needs you might have and whatever foil you have currently. So guys, this is one of those videos that we're going to write uh, an accompanying blog for it that's going to be really important um, if you want to get the full understanding of things. So click into the eye icon in the upper right hand of your screen. That's going to take you to our foil boarding knowledge center. It's massive and it's growing so be sure to click in there and click around. After you're done with this video and blog as well, there's a lot of info there that you might find interesting. Um, so in that blog, we are going to put some charts, uh, some recommendations, some common kind of quiver choices uh, for each of our brands, as well as some other interesting info that really doesn't play out as well in the video uh, media that we're in right now. So watch the video, click into the blog, get more information, and if you have any other questions, drop them in the comments section below or pick up the phone and call us. So guys, in this foil movement that's going on, uh, there's some different riding styles that have really emerged. You know, we've got the, the cruisy guy, the light wind guy, you know, the foot trick guy, the big air, the racer people. Um, everybody has kind of their own thing that they enjoy and uh, it really, it all mashes together really well. But different wing designs are going to adapt to those different styles of riding or different speeds uh, and conditions of riding uh, more ideally than others. So only one foil, you're really going to have only one set of ideals and uh, you know it may not progress as well in higher speeds or lower speeds or when you're trying to learn a new tack or trick and all of that. So you got to build some more foils, uh, add some new wings to your foils I should say, to really expand that flavor, try some new stuff and really enjoy foiling no matter what the condition or whatever style you're riding throw a different wing on there and bang, you got yourself a new experience, um, which is really fun. Especially if you're a guy like me, you know, I kind of got it into it, uh, into the light wind side of things, and then immediately realized its application, you know, in higher winds or waves uh, or jumping and stuff like that. Uh, immediately, you know, really exposed all these different opportunities and what some other wings might be good for. So in the shop and, and even in the industry right now, a lot of the riders are kind of in this foiling's only for light wind or when the wind is janky, um, but it's, it's quickly progressing out of that. You know, I'm just as likely to grab my foil in 30 knots as I am in 10, um, even more so in a lot of occasions because those conditions can really open up a lot of new opportunities um, that you've never done before. So grabbing onto an additional foil wing is going to allow you to go and explore that new style of riding um, or perhaps even get out there and foil without having to purchase a tiny little kite uh, for your existing foil to be able to ride it. But what I found quickly is that I wanted to ride beyond, you know, really just those light wind cruisy stages and I wanted to start riding in higher wind ranges and different styles, trying some new stuff out. And really that necessitated me, you know, going out and buying some more wings to build my foil quiver. So in building a foil quiver, um, really we want to break this down into three separate uh, categories. We're gonna make it a little bit more generic, jump into the blog for more specifics about what might be best for you. Um, but we're talking about our light wind, our mid range and our higher winds or higher speed, I should say foil wings. Um, and those are kind of our three groups that most people could consider. The first one, light wind, really we believe everybody should have one of these in their quiver. If you only have one wing, this should probably be it unless you're just a hardcore racer. Um, the light wind wings is going to be the best way for any new rider to adapt to the sport. Uh, it's going to allow you to progress easily in a slower atmosphere with more stability. Um, and then also, it's always going to be there for those days where it's just not blowing as much as you might 
you know, hope for, it's always going to be there as that great light wind option. So these larger wings or the light wind wings, you know, beyond being a great light wind uh, kiteboarding hydrofoil wing, they're also just really versatile into other sports. You know, you can surf with them a lot of times. You can wake surf. Uh, if you're into windsurfing, that's there as well. I mean, even something like, you know, toe ins or dock starts, you know, this is all stuff that's going to be, um, that you can play with with these wings and it really allow you to expand into other sports as well um, or even just get out there and have a blast if, if there's a day where you don't have some great wind. So definitely hang on to that one. It's one of our most versatile wing offerings and it's, it's one of the reasons we sell so many and, and recommend these to everyone is that you know really everybody can benefit from having this wing in their quiver. Beginner, intermediate, you know advanced guys even. This is going to allow you to expand your your uh, range out there, try some new sports, and, and learn some new stuff on a more stable platform. So some examples of these uh, larger wings, um, you know, really there's a ton of them, so I'm not gonna give you a full list here, but Slingshot Infinity 76, you got the Slingshot H2, the uh, Moses 633, our Neil Pry Glide Surf, medium or even large size, even the small could probably fit into this category for lighter guys. Uh, we got the uh, any of the surf wings really in those medium or large sizes, so from Nash or GoFoil are, are going to be great for this as well. Moving on to our second category, which is kind of our mid-speed or our uh, you know middle of the road kind of foil. They're a little bit smaller in terms of surface area than the large. What that's going to do is allow you to ride a little faster. Um, so in those days, you know, maybe where you're on your nine meter kite and you're progressing kind of out of the, the bigger wing, it's getting a little too powered and lifty for you. Um, without changing kites, you can simply swap wings, put on that medium wing, and that's going to allow you to get out there with a little bit more power and control with that extra bit of speed. Uh, this is also going to give you some more upwind angle. So if you're playing around, you know, maybe doing an upwinder or something, or just doing some, some mock race courses or something, it's going to you know, get you upwind a little quicker at a harder angle and uh, also help to control that power by dragging it upwind. So these medium wings, besides just having a, a higher speed range, are also going to be quite a bit more maneuverable. Uh, so if you want to get out there and really rip some hard turns or do some tricks, maybe that, that require a little tighter turning radius, uh, this is a great way to do that. It's also going to allow you to progress into some jumping um, and some air tricks you know, that maybe your, your big wings are a little heavy or cumbersome for. Uh, so this second middle of the road wing is really the second one uh, you should be progressing into as you move into a higher speed of riding. And that might be, you know, a 14 meter in, in lighter winds if you just want to ride faster. It might also be, you know, riding in 30 or 40 knots with a smaller kite. Uh, the second wing is really going to allow you to up the ante in terms of the adrenaline and that speed and, and get those g-forces going. Uh, so this will really get your heart pumping if you're after something a little bit more aggressive than your large wing offering. One additional benefit to this that people don't really think about is if you're traveling or just trying to keep your quiver a little bit more condensed in terms of kite sizes, you can really expand the range of a kite using a different hydrofoil wing. So say you're going on a trip and you really don't have that much spare room to pack you know, two or three kites. Packing a couple of different hydrofoil wings is really going to help you expand the range of the kites that you do bring. So while you might have been blown off of your 9 meter and having to move to you know, a 7 at some point, rather than doing that, you can just switch to a smaller wing size and allow you to keep that same kite pumped up. So if you bring a hydrofoil wing rather than an additional kite, you know, for most kites or foil wings, that'll save you you know, let's say seven to nine pounds, depending on the comparison there. So that gives you a lot of extra wiggle room uh, to fit in that bag when you're traveling without either going over the weight limit or being reduced to not bring enough other things. So at which point you're going to transition is really going to depend on your riding style uh, as well as your tolerance for power while you're foiling. Somebody like myself, who tends to be more cruisy or surf style, I would call it, is going to transition uh, to a smaller kite or say to a smaller foil uh, earlier in the, that wind range or speed range, whereas somebody like our rider Blake Olson, who likes to ride more powered, doing airs and, and loops and things like that, 
he's going to hang on a little bit longer, um, hang on to that power and the speed, whereas I'm going to want to transition sooner so that when I do loops and carve around, I'm not being yarded off my board. So the third category is our smallest wing shape. These are really reserved for high speed riding. Uh, now whether you're a racer or somebody that wants to boost huge or just enjoy a lot of speed or maybe you're involved in some sort of race league, um, these are going to be the wings you want to look at. They really allow for the maximum amount of speed and control in those crazy, you know, heart pounding speeds. So is this wing for everybody? You know, maybe not, but I think everybody, you know, can at least get excited about going as fast as they can on a foil uh, or maybe leaving their friends in the dust when you're out there foiling, you know, going fast is fun, but it's a lot faster when you're blowing past your buddies. Uh, so this is really one that everybody should experience and, uh, you know, maybe not for everybody, but it's really um, something that you can enjoy, set some new records for yourself and really test the limits in terms of high speed riding um, as well as just higher wind riding. You know, maybe you're not going as fast as you possibly can, but having a smaller wing uh, in those higher wind conditions will allow you to get out there and have a blast without having to invest in tiny, tiny, tiny kites um, to do so. So this is really one, you know, that expands uh, the range up there on the top end of things. It will really polar opposite style of riding to your cruisy freestyle. Um, so it's just another flavor to get out there and really enjoy uh, as part of the hydrofoiling style. So for myself, for instance, you know, really, I've, as I said before, more cruisy, surfy style, um, but I still have a blast getting out there and testing the limits of my speed, uh, running some mock race courses and timing myself just to see how good I can do with that, um, and just getting out there and having a blast doing something different than what I do normally. Uh, beyond that, you know, it's just going to allow me to get out there in those days where it's cranking 30 knots and 10 foot waves, you know, while I would normally ride a surfier wing, you know, those kind of conditions just won't allow for it. You'll struggle more trying to hold that thing down than you would just grabbing a faster foil, smaller foil between the wave and the power of the, of the wind, you know, amplifying what's going on. You're just riding faster anyway, so you might as well have that extra element of control and maneuverability so you can make the most of it. So not everybody's going to need a quiver of wings. If you are interested in you know, building a quiver, or how that might affect your performance and your riding, pick up the phone, give us a call. Uh, we'd love to talk to you about it and see if maybe this is something that would work well for you. If you're already a rider that's really figured this out, you're on the cutting edge of things, you're like, man, I'm, I already got this down. We'd love to hear what you're enjoying in the comments section as well. Uh, so let us know what you're riding, why you like it, and uh, it'd be interesting to see uh, everybody kind of what, what's going on out there. As with all of our videos, especially this one, click that eye icon if you haven't done it already. Uh, you're going to jump into the blog, the Foilboarding Knowledge Center, and get a ton of information, some more specifics about what wings might be good for you and some common wing offerings. Thanks for coming back and watching, you guys. As always, give us a thumbs up if you really enjoyed this video, and subscribe uh, for more notifications when we drop our next Foil Fridays.